OK, who wants to use the clink set analyzer? OK, excellent. So let's start it. Um, let's start with some motivation. Why do we need to validate software, right? Why do we need to test, to simulate, to analyze it anyway? And the answer is simple, right? We have bugs, and we want to get rid of bugs unless in those rare situations they become features. Uh, we want to get rid of bugs, right? Um, this is a really nice image. Uh, I'm not really sure it's real or not, but it's supposed to be the first bug report ever created by Grace Hopper. So that's the bug that was in the first in the computer. Uh, uh, and we still have bugs, right? It's, since the first computer, we still have bugs. So I'm just give you, present you some, some bugs that are around for a long time. And sometimes we just learn how to live with them. And sometimes we, it takes a while just to find how to, how to fix it. So there is an 11 years old in Firefox, a four years old bug with, in Wine, a 17 years old in React OS. And so the question is, uh, these bugs are there. Uh, they are really hard to, to spot. So do we need to, we need tools to actually find them, right? Um, so automat automatic bug finding tools come to the rescue, uh, kind of. Um, not really yet, uh, but we, we have a lot of good results recently. So this one is from 14. It's a tool called CPP Check that found a bug that was 13 years old in Xorg. So uh, tools are improving, and we want them to find bugs and actually report them in a nice way so we can fix them, right? Um, so what's the difference between doing some kind of analysis and testing. Uh, so testing, uh, let's suppose we have our state space of the program over there. So testing <coughs> usually checks one path, right? Uh, we're going to give some inputs, some concrete inputs. We're going to run the tool, and usually it checks one path. It might check some other paths that we have random uh, in, in branches here, et cetera. Um, uh, it may miss error, errors, but it's fast. So we can do it a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of tests. And we either get an OK, OK, you, there's no bug here in this path you checked, or there is an error. Uh, on the other hand, when we are talking about static analysis, we have a specification. Uh, for instance, we have it LTL. And we actually check in the whole state space of the program. And after the analysis, we have either, uh, in this case, model checking is one, one kind of static analysis. So we have either OK, there's no bug. Or there's a bug and here's a trace. Uh, so it actually shows the path where how to how the the, the, the error was triggered. Uh, it's nice because it explores every single uh, path in your program, but it doesn't scale because well we are exploring everything. Uh, so these are the the advantages. This advantage is one is fast, it doesn't explore all the paths. One is is slow and explore everything. So um, this. We, we have to come up with ways to try to avoid this explosion, right? This path explosion, exploring all the paths. So there are two main techniques there uh, in how to explore the, the state space. There's BMC and symbolic execution. I'm going to focus on symbolic execution um, because it's how the Clang Stack Analyzer works. So the symbolic execution, it we have a, a state space, right? And we explore the paths individually, um, trying, looking for, for proper violations. So let's say we have one path there. Um, and then and look for the third node uh, from, from the end to the back. Uh, it's a, sorry, the fourth one, no, the fifth one. So it's a branch there. So what it does is follow this path, then go back to that branch, and follow the other path. <laughs> and it go back to the previous one, follows one path. And so it keeps doing that, and it does it to, 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 all, to all paths. Um, it will explore all the, the state space, maybe in a few cases. Uh, but we have some small queries. Right? Instead of analyzing everything as a whole, we analyze everything in small chunks. So this will make the analysis a little bit faster. Uh, and this is how the, the Clank Stack Analyzer works. Um, so the Clank Stack Analyzer is built on top of Clank. It supports all the, all the language that Clang supports. Um, it performs this context sensitive inter procedure analysis. Um, and this is something that we, we have to stress is just look at translation unit, one translation unit per time. Um, 
which might trigger some false positives bugs. So you have a function defined another file. It, will might, it might report some, some false positive bugs, something that is being worked on by another groups. Uh, and it, is, it offers a, a wide range of checkers. So you have even for uh, pattern matching checkers, so using of unsafe STACOP, CPI, for instance, and path sensitive checks, which are the, the, the checkers that I worked in this project. So it looks for the paths and see if one proper violation is triggered in that path. Um, one new point that the reference is one, one example I'm going to show you in a bit. So the idea is we're going to sacrifice precision for speed. Uh, the kind of analyzer, the idea behind it is it's going to analyze your project. Uh, it might report some wrong results, some false bugs. It might miss some bugs, but we'll give you something. So that's a more industrial aspect of the, of the stack analyzer. Uh, we, we want to provide something, right? It might not be the best results, but it's something that the, the developer can, can have a look and understand. So let's start with an example here. So uh, it's a very simple uh, function. We have a pointer to zero. We have a branch and a deference, otherwise it returns zero. Is this program safe? Uh, surprisingly enough, this program is safe because this is never true. So we are just selecting the first, the first bit of A and selecting an inverse in. Uh, so it's always false. This is also false. It's, it's fragile. I agree with you guys. It's, yeah. it's something that you don't want to have in your program, but it's, it's safe. Um, uh, so this is a very small example that Clang, uh, when analyzing it, uh, Clang doesn't support uh, bitwise operations. So it just assumes that this condition might be true. And then it reports the bug. So if you run Clang, uh, the, the site analyzer, you have this the reference new pointer in line uh, for uh, column 12. Um, and it also generates this nice HTML report for you. So if you have a look there, you have this, the steps that it took to, to trigger the, the new pointer the reference. So started with Z, then assuming the first part of the if condition, the second part of the condition, taking the two branch of if, and then the reference. So, and this this is really nice. It's one of the best things about the clean set analyzer, the, the bug reports, because you you just you it generates to you the, the HTML. You open your browser and you can use the errors to just to walk on the path. Uh, so it's quite nice to follow and try to understand the, the bug report itself. Uh, yeah. So this is the the wrong assumption that the, the stack analyzer did. Uh, I was going to do a demo, uh, but my laptop didn't work. So we're going to try again by the end. Uh, hopefully, we can get it to work. Um, OK, so we have a unprecise analysis in the, the clang stack analyzer. So why don't we replace it with a more precise, uh, yeah, why don't we replace it with a precise solver, right? Um, it's wrong there. So that was something that was done in 2017 by Dominic Chang. Um, so he used something called SMT solvers. Uh, the one he implemented it was Z3 from Microsoft. It's an open source SMT solver. And it's, it's, it's full precision. You, know, right? you encode everything, every constraint um, using this th as a theory of SMT, and you, and you analyze your project. The problem is uh, it was up to 20 times slower than the constraint solver. So it kind of defeats our initial uh, idea of producing something. So we are so slow that in the end, the user just don't want to use it, right? Um, so we still want to be fast, and we still want to produce some results, some bug reports, there, so the user can use it, right? Uh, so we propose something else. Instead of replacing this unprecise solver in the clean analyzer, we're just going to add this precise analysis as a post-processing step. So we're going to generate all the bug reports with the unprecise solver, and then we're going to post-process them, encoding full precision, and check for satisfiability. We check if those bugs are actually feasible. And surprisingly enough, we are adding an extra step, and it makes the analysis faster. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but I'm going to show you the, and explain why briefly. Um, so. Um, we are only interested in the path sensitive checkers. Uh, 
because we are we are not looking for pattern matching. So we are looking for the constraints in a path. And we are going to encode these constraints and see if they are feasible. Um, so we are using SMT solvers. Uh, we encode, as I said, uh, we encode and check for satisfiability. And so currently we have five different solvers: so Z3, Bolecto, Matsat, EISIS, and CVC4. Only Z3 it's, is in the in the Clang main repo, main, main repository. The reason why is that we implemented the five of them, and basically we have the we had the same results. So right now there's no clear advantage of having them all. Uh, it was just it will be just more code to and things. So right now there's no advantage of having them. Uh, if someone finds a need for them in the future, it's it's there already. The patches are up. It's just a, a matter of merging them. So this is the brief of a view of the of the static analyzer and the uh, extra step. So on the on the left you have the symbol execution that was there. So basically what it works is the symbolic execution will look at, at the Kling ST. It will give this AST this path to these checkers. The checkers will generate some constraints, so values that we of branches and etc. And just give to this constraint solver, which is, is the one that is unprecise. The solver will try to solve this these constraints and we say uh, okay, this this is satisfiable. This bug is real, and it will generate a bug report. So this is basically how how the static analyzer works. And now this next step called SMT refutation, we have for each bug report, we're just going to look at the constraints. We're going to encode in the solvers and and check for satisfiability again. Uh, and then we're just going to report the ones that we the the solver said. Okay, this is satisfiable. This is feasible. This might happen. Uh, so this is the SMT formula for that program there, uh, the first one that I showed you. Uh, so just real quick, uh, there's a, there was a function, uh, variable called a, right? It was so this is converted to a star zero, and basically what this formula is, is checking is get the the bit from zero to zero uh, of st of variable star, sorry, dollar zero, and this should be one, and get zero, the, the first bit of dollar zero, and then should be zero. So basically what this is, is doing is give me a bit vector, right, or, um, a vector of bits, where the first one is zero and the first one is, is one. So this cannot happen because we are dealing with binary variables. So this is unsatisfiable. And for that reason, when we do this more precise analysis in that first project, in first program, it will not report the bug. Uh, so we evaluated this analysis in 12 projects. So you see some big projects there. I think the biggest one is XNU, the MacOX kernel. Um, so we have those five different solvers that I told you. And so all the, the instructions to reproduce this, this um, results that we had are in there. Uh, if you guys, you can check there. The, all the results, all the versions of the, of the tools that we used and everything. Um, so, these are the results. Uh, I know a lot of numbers. Let's go through them quickly. Just uh, heads up, these are the average time of all the solvers. They're basically performed the same, so I just used the, the average there. So, out of the 12, in eight uh, projects, uh, we removed bugs. Right? So, this more precise analysis was worth it, and it removed the bugs. And on average, about 10% of the bugs were removed. Uh, all of them were false bugs. We, we are not removing any, any real, real bug. Um, and on average, this is 6% faster, which is confusing, I know. But the reason is, that's the, is, is, a, is a funny reason. So the Kling Stack Analyzer generates the HTML reports, um, and they are big, right? So for that small project that, that I showed you, it's about 100K. Um, so for every project, for every bug report, you just have to generate this, this bug report. So the reason why we are faster is that we are saving on the I.O. So there is no write to the disk of those HTML. Uh, yeah. So that's why it's not a huge gain. It's around 6% faster. Um, all right. So oops. On the, project, there, on the projects that we didn't remove any bug, on average is a 1% slowdown. So these are really good results because we, when we 
can do something. When we remove bad results, we are actually faster. And when we don't, the overhead is minimal. It's 1% slow down. Um, so on total were 89 bugs refu refuted. Um, on average, there was a 35% speed up uh, per project. is around 6.25%, uh, so 35 seconds. And when there are no bugs, uh, there's one second slowdown. That's usually 1% slow. Uh, sorry, one second. Yeah, it's slowed down, and it's 1.24%. Uh, that was going to be my second demo. Um, these are. I, we're going to try to late uh, to make it work later, but uh, all the instructions I was going to give here, they are available online. So basically, it's going to show you how to, if you have a small prog program and you just want to check uh, your small program, there's a nice command line that you can use. Uh, if you want to use some kind of automated every night run the Clang Stack Analyzer, the, uh, the Clang, in the repository, there are some scripts to do that. So you just set the path to your project, and then create a cron, te a cron job, and every night we just run everything, and every night analyze, generate bug reports for your tool. Uh, hopefully, we can get it to work later. Um, OK, so we have this uh, SMT support in the, in the Clang, in Clang, right? Uh, and it was released as part of Clang 7, so a while ago. Um, we, during this project, I, we had to refactor a lot of code from the, from the, from the Z3 backend, and now we have a proper SMT API in LLVM. Um, uh, and as I said, we have patches for other solvers, but since they are, there are no clear advantage of having them, yeah, we, we just haven't submitted. So what's the future now? So the future is start with that uh, patch. That patch called uh, the D54978. Uh, so it was too late for Clang 8, unfortunately. But basically, it's moving the SMT API to LFM. Um, and what does, it, what does it bring to us? So the first one is there are people already using it to validate a, a transformation paths in the, in the LFM, LFM backend. So, uh, so in, in this case, Scala Evolution is generate formulas for the original uh, uh, B code and the optimized one, and just try to validate if the transformations are actually uh, real, uh, if, they are, if, they are, uh, if they hold. Uh, in the future, who knows? We might have an SMT backend in LVM. There are some problems that need to be fixed, uh, solved there, so memory handling. How are we going to handle loops there? Uh, so was it quantifiers? No. Uh, uh, some acknowledgments. Uh, this, this project was done part of the GSOC. And all of these people helped me and Enrico to achieve that. Uh, and that's it. Well, thank you very much. So this is me, the experiments, if you guys want to take a picture. There are all the instructions to run the Clang Stack Analyzer that I was going to show here are uh, there, so you don't actually need to, uh, to, I don't need to actually to explain it, but let's try to do it. Uh, the Clang Stack Analyzer web page, and this is a five minute mi video uh, just showing you how to run the, the Stack Analyzer on, the, on a terminal, so you can follow and apply to your project. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's try to. Yeah, let's try to. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, sorry guys, it's not working. Do you want to try it? Here? No, there's nothing. Not even the NVIDIA thing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, do, any more questions? questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so why did you integrate the solver with the other solver? Why is it a full processing? Because if you're doing the modification, you could have uh, find out that something is unsatisfiable, <coughs> and then you can run the other solver and check that it's satisfiable or vice versa. Is it all the same? I.O. thing? 
Yes. Uh, so the the question was why we didn't integrate the 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 SMT in the symbolic execution. Uh, so so that was the the thing that I said it would it w it was twenty up to twenty times lower, and the reason was because how the the Klang static analysis was created is every is every time we generate a new state. So every time we we are doing the symbolic execution and generate a new state. We query the, the sofa. And this is extremely expensive uh, to query the, the SMT sofa. And to change that in the Clink Static Analyzer, we require a lot of work. So that's why we moved to this uh, faster solution, which was just using it as a post processing step. Can you just say how many pop blocks you had uh, in the end? Because if it's the, the, pop, the number that you showed on the. Let me go back. On the this one? <coughs> Oh, sorry. So you said that you, you improved 10% yeah. of, the, of how you have killed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. So he asked, uh, I, remo I said that I removed on, on, what is it? on average 10%, right? Uh, so how many uh, more false positives are still there? So without the refutation, uh, the numbers are high. The false positives are, right, are high. Mostly because of the lack of cross-translation unit support. So it's around 40%, 50%. So this, this removes one part of the problem. Of the problem. So there is another, another approach to try to remove those, those false positives left. So it's, it's still under development. I, I didn't even put it here. But the idea is when we generate the formula, right, it will generate for me a contract sample. So every assignment to the inputs of the of the functions and everything that will uh, that will trigger this this proper evaluation this bug. So one idea is we can use this information to generate tests, and then we just run the tests. The, the tests that don't crash, don't don't give any error, it will just remove those. But this is not it's not implemented yet. We haven't started to do it. Uh, this is one approach um, because right now we don't have a, a good idea how to implement the, the cross translation unit support effectively. Uh, so I think the test generation it will be a, a little bit better. It will give a better results for now. Okay. Anyone got any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, so going back to the, the question about, about solver, so part of the issue is probably that giving the solver more precise constraints, mm -hmm. right? So have, have you looked, so A, have you looked at uh, just giving the existing constraints and like what is the performance difference in that case? And mm -hmm. B, like is it possible to um, like restart the solver like to D3 so it doesn't uh, evaluate everything from the beginning each time you call it? Right, so the first, que the first question was, uh, the second one was, is there any way of restarting Z3 um, to make it faster? And the first one, sorry, can you repeat the first one? Well, it's, it's about which part of the... Oh, the precision, right. It's about the precision and right. which part is about... And the first one is about how can we control the precision in Z3. So the first one, I'd say we don't want to be less precise because we are already running a less precise analysis. And we want to actually remove the, the false bugs. So we want to be as precise as you can be. Right? Uh, the second question is about trying to restart solver uh, to improve the performance. We've tried that. Uh, we also tried to do something called incremental solving. Um, but the results were not great. Because the solver, as it is implemented, it's stateless. So we did it. There was a lot of hack involved in the code. It was not pretty. And we didn't get any performance improvement. OK. I guess it.